نارو مكتا مطا تفنوا فقالوا بايكنا أطانا تكسوا أنا يتاتوا هنا كاها كيلو تيتنا تنا وما تاي وكتوني أطوى يقطع Celebrating 125 years is an amazing achievement. 500 seasons this school has seen. I'm just one of the cogs in the system, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of those principals, staff, 
school committees, board members, PTAs that have gone before my time here and thank them for their contribution into the school as well. The school obviously played a big role in your lives, hopefully. Um, I guess you wouldn't be here if you didn't have some fond memories of this school. Now it is our job here to ensure that it plays a big part in the lives of our current students. Our school is too big for them all to be here. That's why there was just a smaller group that we squeezed in up the front. Uh, but those of you here yesterday obviously had the opportunity to meet with our students. I joined the school here in 2007, so I've been here quite some time now too. During the last eight years, there have been some enormous changes. Those of you returning after 40, 50, 60, 10, 20 years, you will have seen the changes. But even in the last seven years, there have been significant changes here. During those last seven to eight years, the role has climbed from 230 to an expected role of over 360 this year. Every year, the role grows by maybe between 10 and 20. This trend is set to continue, if not to speed up, over the next five to 10 years. During my time, we have built... Just wondering, if Jan, can you, you're very... Bring out the um, XAP. Just, if people want to talk, that, that's okay, but maybe they could just move a little bit further away. What I've got to say is really important. <laughs> uh, during my time, we built six additional classrooms alone, extended this hall, also the new admin block next door here. There have also been significant infrastructure upgrades to ensure that we try to future proof for further growth. They do expect the area to double in size over the next 25 years. 25 years is a long time, but even if it is just average growth, it's still looking at probably another class every, every second year at least, if not even 18 months. The area is obviously growing. This is enhanced by a really strong school reputation. At the moment, we also turn away close to 50 students every year who don't live in our school zone. It was a common query I had from people yesterday, saying how many are coming from the city? The answer is a very, very small number, and usually only maybe if their parents work here. We increasingly are turning away huge numbers that want to come out here to be part of our school. Society has changed enormously, and so too has the world of education. There is a huge amount of change, but change is vital in order to prepare today's children for the reality of what they will face. With connectivity, information, global population growing exponentially, the world we live in has shifted drastically and will continue to shift drastically in the near future. They say the new amount of technical information is doubling every two years. For students starting a four-year university degree, this means that half of what they learn in their first year of study is outdated by their third year of study. When we went to school, or when I went to school, and certainly when many of you went to school, one of the key purposes of school was to prepare us for a career. However, nowadays, we face a really challenging situation. The top 10 in-demand jobs last year did not even exist in 2009. It is estimated that these kids up here at the front today, by the time they're in their mid-30s, they will have on average between 10 and 14 jobs. If we hope just to tell these students what we know in order for them to be able to do what we do, we've seriously misunderstood the task required of education in today's society. We are preparing these students for jobs that don't exist, using technologies that have not been invented yet in order to solve problems that we don't even know are problems yet. <laughs> we essentially need to prepare these children for what we can't prepare them for. These are some of the challenges, one that we thrive upon here with the team that I have, and are the next steps for this school over the next X number of years that we're here. Really proud to say that we're leading the charge in terms of some of the learning programs, integrating digital devices into our programs. For those people that uh, came along yesterday afternoon, you will have seen some of the changes that are happening in terms of how students are learning, different types of environments, 
different types of furniture, no longer do we have desks, God forbid, um, and also a wealth of technology. Our senior students bringing their own laptops, our younger students, iPads galore. Uh, later on, I'll open up some of the classes, keep an eye out for me, I'd love to take you through some of the, some of the different spaces. A lot of the students are off playing sport today, but we will have some students around as well. So despite all these changes though, rest assured, the Corfo School is still similar in some ways to when you were at school. Whilst the school has evolved with time, we've worked really hard to still maintain that original philosophy and school spirit. We work really hard to still retain what it feels like to be a country school, despite the fact that we are really semi-rural at best, and as the city creeps out, ever becoming part of northwest Hamilton. So even though we're no longer a small country school, judging from the comments yesterday from the people here and of the students, they could see the pride the students have in their school, the feel of the school, that is what our place is all about. Our school values are well known by the students, TK Pride. Pride itself is something that comes through very strongly. Students and parents are proud to say they're from Tukorfai. Pride also forms an acronym for our core values Partnership, respect, integrity, drive, and excellence. The school still forms the, the hub of the community. School events are attended by enormous numbers of parents. Many parents volunteer thousands upon thousands of hours to support school wide events. Last year we had 30 winter sports teams, all coached and managed by parents, no teachers involved. Some classes go off to camp with as many as 20 parents going along with a class of 25 to 30 students. This weekend we are delighted to host you. Remember your time at Corfo with pride, reconnect with old classmates and your friends, tell stories, laugh hard. Again, I'd like to welcome you back and have a fantastic weekend. Thank you.
so much, and rightly we honour thee, and think of them today. In the memorial hall, we read their names on the honours board. Yet the Tikawai of today, and the lives of so many who have gone to from here, have been shaped not only by those who served in that way, but by so many in all sorts of other spheres. Think, if you will, of those who served as officials in local sports clubs, coaches and supporters in behind-the-scenes roles, removing the cow packs from the football field. <laughs> Think, too, of those who helped mould young lives, the school staff, the Gillespies, the Crosses, the Hostics, the loving, caring infant mistresses, and many more. Then there were the volunteers who staffed the Sunday schools and ran the youth groups, giving their time and effort freely for the sake of the children. Also the women who worked unstintingly, sharing their expertise in many ways in helping raise money for all sorts of local projects. Remember those wonderful concerts in the hall. Tikawa was has always been a farming community, and the farmers have been reliant upon the local carriers transporting both farming requirements and the products of the farm, including milk to the local cheese factory, whose staff made their own particular contribution to the well-being of the community. And one not surprises, too, with the cheeses in the competitions at the winter show. Then there has been the Tikawai store, in many ways the hub of the district. From the days of Alf Hunt and Con Boss onwards. More recently, but still quite a long way back, the garage was built, providing another centre of activity and service. When the Pākehā people first came to Tikawai, they cleared the land and drained the swamps. It was hard, back-breaking work, but it was eased somewhat by the spirit of mutual support and help, one for the other. That spirit continued in the haymaking games of the 20s, 30s and 40s. So the neighbour helped neighbour whenever need arose, and the wives were always there, supporting in any way they could making buckets of lemon drink and lots of tea. This continued also in the readiness to serve on community committees, the patriotic committee of four years, the hall and school committees and various church committees and the community working leaders. It was, I believe, that spirit of mutual support and caring more than anything else that made to color what it has been and what it will be long into the future. My name is Natalie Dodd and I was a pupil at Kofi School um, between 1997 and 2005. I loved my time at Kofi School so much. However, there was a time where I was forced to leave to go to high school. Um, but I worked out a way to come back and that was as a teacher, so I'm now a teacher at Kofi School. I'm now in my second year of teaching and I couldn't think of a better place to start my career. I'm the fourth generation of my family to attend the school, with my mum, granddad and his dad also attending the school. My grandma also taught there and relieved, was relieving there while I was still at school. You could argue that we all went to different schools. My granddad tells me he went to Tekowai, I went to Tekowai and I now teach at Tekowai. <laughs> Although the name over the year has changed, there are many things that I believe are still the same as when some of you were there. And this gives our school the great rural feel, despite the role growth in the city moving further and further this way. Events such as Calf Club Day, Flower Show, Cross Country, which is held at the farm down that way, and swimming sports, now held at the Ngaroahe Pool, 
Um, the pool that we have now, just here, is, is heated and this, my students complain about it being cold. <laughs> and I was like, well, we now see there's no heating, so suck it up and do it. <laughs> um, we also have some new, um, new events, such as the Harvest Festival. We have athletics, triathlon, which will be next week. And we're in our 10th year, what we call the Top School Games, where we have about 20 other schools that bring teams of students along and they compete in a range of team challenges. Our school is also one of the few that I know of that allow Bull Rush at lunchtime or King Asini for some of you. Um, it is supervised by a teacher, quite often it's me. <laughs> Even since I've been at school, which doesn't feel that long ago, the way kids learn in the classrooms is so different. Most of my learning was done on the flip top brown desks. With 30 other students, we were reading textbooks, the teacher was writing on a whiteboard or an OHP. I wasn't lucky enough to have the blackboard experience, unfortunately. And I remember having a trip to the computer lab once a week where we'd go and type up our stories that we'd written. My playtimes involved playing down the backfield, playing rugby, soccer, and horseback down on the courts. Unfortunately, in those days, the staff room was right by the courts, so after the balls went onto the road a few times, we'd get banned. But then we'd wait a little bit longer and then bring it back and then get back again. But you keep it going. Other memories I have of school is knowing everyone's name, catching the 40 minute bus ride every morning and afternoon, going to tech as a senior student to St Andrews Middle School every Monday, and the awesome friends and teachers I had, and also the camps we went on. Ten years later, I'm back in the same classroom I was in when I was a senior student. However, my days now look a lot different to when I was there. Every morning I sit down on a couch in front of 16 Year 7 and 8 students, that's Form 1 and 2, alongside another teacher in a shared space which is the size of two classrooms. Learning in classroom life for my students is so different. We don't have desks. We have range of furniture ranging from cushions, couches, bean bags, high tables, low tables, soft chairs and soft chairs that students can choose to sit on. Our students can even choose to sit outside and do their work. Our kids have a lot more choice, not just with where they work, but with what activities they do, choose to do and when. This year is the first year of BYOD, which is bring your own device to school. This is where every student is able to bring their own laptop to school which they complete a lot of their work on. So much of their learning is completed online with homework and many of their tests even being online. The great thing with the tests is that the computer marks it for you so I don't have to do the marking. <laughs> we also have a range of other technologies such as iPads, tablets, projectors and we even have a TV which we use for a range of tasks such as showing videos and occasionally watching the cricket. <laughs> One of the biggest differences, I think, are the opportunities my students get from when I was there. In two weeks, we go to what we call a leadership retreat in Raglan, where the students get to learn leadership skills outside of the classroom. Term two, they go into Camp Adir, which is in the Hanua Ranges, for a week of challenges. Term three, there's sports camp, which is at Totra Springs in Matamata, where we take 30 of our best sports people along to um, compete in, some, in an intense week of sport ranging from rugby to petanque, volleyball to croquet to darts. They have it all there. There are also a range of other leadership opportunities for our kids such as numer numerous leadership conferences, the opportunity to be part of a student council or be selected as house captains. Having houses is new from when I was there. We have four houses, Hari Kotahi, Whakapono, Ihi and Mana representing the school's pride values. We also have the Year 8 Leavers Dinner at the end of the year to farewell our Year 8s. I was lucky enough to go to my first one last year. It's a formal, formal event where all the kids get to get dressed up and say a speech in front of um, all their peers, teachers and parents and a chance to say goodbye and a chance for us to wish them all the best for the future. These are just a few of the things I wanted to share with you 
As you can see, the school has changed a lot, even since 2005. So I can't even imagine what it must be like for some of you. One of the, one of the things that have changed for me is I'm no longer afraid to go into the staff room. I now think of it as more of a child-free recluse. <laughs> and also the place I keep my lunch. I love my job. We have so much fun. I love, with, I love working with some truly awesome students, some of them you saw well, today, and also the staff. I love the community and its history that we are all a part of. It is a very special place. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend and that you enjoy seeing the rest of the school as it is today. Reflecting on your old school days, catching up with old friends, sharing each other's stories and celebrating 125 years of Tacofi School.